start. It should like it should start any minute now. Okay. There we are. There we are. That's so recording has started. So if you remain in the meeting, you are deemed to have given your permission uh, to be recorded. There's no other recording allowed, by the way, only this. <clears throat> right. OK, we have two decision items this morning. Um, so first of all, I should say um, this is the last meeting before Christmas. So Merry Christmas to everybody if I forget at the end, because sometimes it's a bit hectic and I do forget at the end. Uh, we got two decision items this morning and the papers come with an amendment sheet, which you should all have reached, re received. And uh, one of the agenda items is on a separate document that comes with the agenda. That's the delegated decisions. So just to make sure you've got all the documents, you should have the document pack, the amendment sheet, uh, the delegated decisions, and of course, Steve's presentation that he uh, sends around by email which you're going to be sharing anyway, Steve, yeah? Yeah, OK. Right, if I can just give me a second to get back to the agenda. OK, uh, right. So, uh, Jane, would you be so kind as to make a roll call of all attendees to the committee and also um, ask them if they have any matters of interest to declare? Thank you, Chair, yes. So, uh, Chair, we could start with you. Have you got any items, uh, declarations of interest? No, I haven't, Jane, and I am here. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, uh, Councillor Percy, again, have you got any declarations of interest? Present and uh, no interest to declare, thank you. Councillor Chris Jones. <laughs> Councillor Scott Bamsey. Councillor Ros Davis. Presennol and no, no interest to declare. Councillor Hunt. I'm here, Jane, and I have no interest to declare. Councillor Woolcock. I'm present, uh, Chair, and I have an interest to declare in as much as I'm a member of the Put for Watkins Site Liaison Committee. It's a personal interest. Uh, so I don't need to um, uh, withdraw from the meeting and I'm allowed to vote. Thank you, Councillor. Chair, I will send the declarations form to Councillor Wilcock for him to complete. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Williams. Present Chair with no interest to, to declare. Councillor Rankes. Present and no interest to declare. Thank you. And Councillor Wingrave. Right, we'll go now to ward members. Councillor Ned Purcell. Councillor Purcell. Thank you. Yes, present. And um, I'm also a member of the Push for Watkin Liaison Committee, but like Councillor Woolcock, um, it's a personal interest and I don't have a vote anyway, but I'm OK to speak. And uh, Councillor Sonia Reynolds, please. Present and like the other two local councillors, I'm a member of the Porthwatkin Watkin Liaison Committee, uh, personal interest. Um, and again, I don't have a vote. Uh, if I could go to officers now, uh, Steve Ball. Yes, present. Thank you very much. Rebecca McGregor. Present. Good morning, everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, Kelvin Davis. Liam Morgan. Yeah, morning, present. Lovely, thank you, Kelvin. Liam Morgan. Present. Good morning. Is Terry Davis here? Justin D Griffiths. Yeah, present. Good morning, everyone. Morning. And I also have a speaker, Matt Nicholas. Mr. Nicholas, are you here? Uh, yes, yeah, good, good morning. Oh, so, so, so my name is Nicholson. Nicholson, right? Yeah. Thank you. Um, we also have a member of the public here, Matthew Roberts. Um, just for you to, you to know, Chair. Is there anyone else present now today's meeting that I haven't called out? Um, yeah, me, um, Tom Boothroyd, uh, Planning Officer. You do uh, minerals and waste for you guys under the service level agreement. Lovely. Thank you very much. Good morning. Yes, Jean, I'm uh, here as well. Jane? Yes. 
Yeah, Kerry, right, thank you. Yeah, yeah you I, did, didn't, I did uh, note you're uh, struggling, yeah, but you're in. Lovely, thank you very much. Um, that completes the roll call. Can I ask you to confirm that we are core up for this meeting, Jane? I'm just checking now. This said no vest chair, yes, so it's has to be over yes, half. that's fine. OK, just about. Well, thank you very much for yes. attending, everybody. And a warm welcome uh, to uh, Matt Nicholson, who's registered to speak. Good morning. And also to uh, Matt Roberts, who's just come to uh, observe. And also to uh, councillors Purcell and Reynolds, who do not normally sit on the planning committee, but have registered to come and uh, give us their views on the business today. So a warm welcome to everybody. Um, with the um, registered speaker, Mr Nicholson, um, you will be given five minutes to speak by uh, Jane, our Democratic Service Officer, and uh, that she'll just give you a quick uh, check at one minute to go. Um, so is that OK with you? Uh, yes, yes, that's fine. Thank Lovely. you. If you have any difficulties, uh, do you know how to raise your hand at the meeting to sort of uh, acknowledge that you wish to uh, say something? Uh, yes, I, I think I've got that. Just, that that's yes. just for if you have any difficulties with IT or anything, that's all, OK? OK, thank you. Lovely. OK, then we'll, uh, we'll proceed with the meeting. Uh, so I've done declarations of interest. I'll go to two minutes of the previous meeting to be pay, pay, uh, found on pages five to eight. Um, does, uh, will anybody uh, please propose that they are a true record? Uh, chair. Uh, who was that? Sorry, Councillor Hunt. Yes. Yes. Uh, who second, please? Yeah, happy to second, Chair. Lovely. Yeah. OK, then noted that those are ratified. So I'll go back to the agenda. Just a second. Right, so then we'll go on to requests for site visits. At the moment, we, we've got a bit of a stop on site visits because of obvious reasons, um, and I haven't had any requests for today's items. So item four then, uh, item four and item five, I think officers uh, will obviously go through each item, but they are to be taken there on the same site, but they are of course different items to be uh, approved or not. So application P2018-0512 uh, I'm not going to read the whole item out because it is on your papers. Um, so I will ask for Mr Ball then to run the committee through this application please. Yes, thank you very much, Chair. You can just let me know when you um, have the uh, the screen shared. Yes, I can see it. All right, thank you. So, uh, good morning, everyone. As as the chair's indicated, there are two items on the committee today for um, at plan applications, which are um, P two thousand eighteen O five one two, which is um, in front of you there, which relates to Puddle Watkin Farm, and also 0511, which also relates to the the, the bottom half of the of, of the site. Um, it's a it's a complex site, and so far as normally you'd have one application that would deal with the whole area, but for different reasons over the the course of the history of the site, um, permissions have been separated but conjoined effectively. So hence why you've got two different applications, which, as you can see from the description in front of you, they are quite detailed. Um, but actually the, the issues um, in hand are relatively simple and I'll, I'll seek to talk you through. As the, um, the report has stated on, on page nine, both of these applications have actually been the subject of a call in request to the Welsh ministers um, who has issued a holding direction, which the majority of members will be aware um, is just issued by the Welsh government and it precludes us from actually granting plan permission, um, but it doesn't stop us actually reporting the matter and gaining a resolution. Um, only should we resolve to grant plan permission, we would then need to advise the Welsh ministers that that is our resolution and await um, their response, which would either be to call the application in or to withdraw their holding direction, thus allowing us to proceed to a decision. So the application its site, site itself, many of you will be aware, it's a historical landfill site at Pushla Watkin. It's in the northwestern part of um, Neath Batalbert. And it's close to or south of Cum Gorse and Gwankagoan and to the northwest of Reed of Row. And um, just 
this is in your report, but the actual site site itself is um, all of these areas. Tip 871 is the app area that it's related to um, the second application 0511 and the, the, the northern part relates to tip 890, which is the ONGA or the existing landfill operation. And 891, which is the, the site in the middle, is the one that's the historical landfill, which, which has been completed in, in the central central section. The, um, the, the picture there probably gives the best best um, view, really. This this shows tip 891 and this this shows the existing um, uh, tip 890, which is currently being landfilled. And effectively, as you can see, this this has been landfilled progressively, landfilled and restored as it's gone along. And you can see the, the existing face of the landfill taken at this point here. The, the application itself um, before you, so it's, it's quite complex matters, but very in, in a simple terms, what it seeks to do is extend the lifetime of the operations for landfill up until the end of 2000 or 2023. So a further three three years and a couple of weeks from today's date um, with an additional year then for the completion of the restoration um, of that site, taking operations as a whole up until 2024. Um, as uh, reported on page 12, the actual current permission for, for um, landfill tipping actually expired in um, towards the end of 2018, um, but the applications were submitted and there have been ongoing discussions and negotiations related to the applications since that time, um, since when landfill operations have continued at the site following that expiry, but um, the authority has continued to monitor those operations and effectively given the, the fact that we've been considering the merits of, of these applications, it hasn't been considered to actually undertake any action in respect of um, the actual landfill operations itself, albeit I'll come to matters related to ODA later in the report that's had a degree of um, interaction more recently. In terms of the, the previous consent um, shown again on, on this picture here, effectively this area here, which I'm circling um, with my cursor, this area was was going to be a landfill site in terms of what was known as cell five, but this proposal effectively seeks to to change that, so it's not going to have as much landfill coming in, and it's effectively going to be seeking to complete this area here. So the main thing really is it's extending the the time limit up until to end of 2023. It's changing the actual amount of landfill coming in, and thus the the final restoration profiles and and landscape um, impacts are, are changing slightly because of the the this void area effectively isn't being filled, so it'd be a, a, a different um, restoration pro profile um, being at the, at the end of completion. Um, the application also proposes a minute phasing, landscaping, and generally tidying up all the the conditions on on I say what are quite complex application histories to delete and to avoid duplication of other conditions to make it tidier consent. Just, I, I won't go into it in, in many detail, but you'll note from pages uh, 16 onwards that there's, there's been quite a lot of representations received. Those have been including from Councillor Lynette Purcell and Anthony Richards from the Pontedaro Ward, um, and also from Councillor Sonia Reynolds from the Guayncagoan Ward, and uh, Lynette Purcell and, and Sonia Reynolds are both here to, to put forward the, their views on behalf of those two wards. The site is actually in Pontedaro, but the impact of the ward do actually extend clearly, particularly in terms of the, the odour issues that we'll discuss later onto Kwankagoan. It's also been um, a number of local representations have been received on the application um, in the region, 19 representations, raising a number of issues, particularly in terms of you know the need for the site and, and, um, and associated issues, but particularly related to issues of strong odour from the site. The policy directive or the policy situation context is set out in, in a lot of detail, which I won't go into on pages 18 onwards, but generally it sets out the um, European directives, which have then fed into Planning Policy Wales, national legislation in terms of wellbeing of future generations, Planning Policy Wales, and particularly um, towards zero waste, which is the national waste strategy. Um, and very much in a nutshell, what um, each of those documents seek to do is to be reducing the reliance on landfill for reducing the amount of, of rubbish quite clearly in terms of reducing and recycling um, and effectively um, moving towards a, a phasing out of residual waste being moved to landfill. But what it does indicate as well is that um, even within that long term framework, there is still a requirement for landfill in the short to medium term up to 2024, 2025. Um, because of that ever decreasing role, um, 
we we still need to to consider applications such as this. And as page twenty two indicates, um, there's there's currently an issue. We we as as an authority and, and as a region, um, there needs to be um, a landfill void um, and a, an ability for a landfill to have up to around a seven year or above figure. And the report indicates that at the last um, monitoring report for Southwest Wales, we are currently at 6.1, which is actually quite drastically reduced from the previous um, survey to, from 11.2 years, which is partly as a, as a result of the expiry of the permission at Putler Watkin, but also other issues in terms of uh, increasing landfill in 2018 and other issues at other sites. So that's of, of relevance in terms of the, the principle, which I'll get to shortly. Just in terms of the local development plan, there's a number of different policies on page 23 onwards, but the most important ones are to note that policy SP19, the strategic policy, does require the authority to make provision for an integrated network of waste management facilities. And one of those is the continuation of the disposal of residual non-hazardous waste and inert waste at the current site, at Pushla Watkin landfill site. So therefore, this is an allocated site within the local development plan for landfill purposes. Um, and that then, of course, with policy SC1, which is a, an outside settlements policy, which effectively allows things such as this in terms of waste management facilities that cannot be reasonably located elsewhere. So, so therefore, in terms of um, the main issues, they're, they're set out on page 25. Um, the, the first one in terms of policy principle and the need for the development. Um, as I've indicated, the, the Welsh Government guidance effectively talks about the fact that there is a diminishing but still important role um, for landfill in the short to medium term up to 2024-2025 while um, other waste treatment infrastructure comes on steam. Um, and within um, that context, um, it is important to understand that while um, this consent has expired, as I say, this is an allocated site for landfill to meet the needs in the local development plan period. The seven year void capacity I just referred to earlier is identified in TAN 21. Um, as the level at which there would be sufficient capacity for within that region to meet future disposal needs and therefore we should be seeking to maintain that level if possible. As the um, annual waste monitoring report is identified from early this year to March 2020, we're down at 6.1 years and that therefore is um, kind of a trigger where the market would normally come forward with sites and solutions to deal with landfill need and this therefore is an example of um, of the market come forward with such a solution, albeit on an existing historical site that is seeking to extend its permission. Although we're not in a position at the moment, um, that the five year figure is just referred to also in a report effectively that if we were to fall below five years, um, that becomes a, a much more significant issue at a regional level because the region would then need to be identifying further landfill sites, which is obviously a, a, a tricky um, situation to be in when there are existing sites such as Putler Watkin and others in the region and actually only a very small um, window in terms of the next four or five years to um, because of the phasing out of the importance on landfill so within that context you know it is important to note that you know that ultimately the next monitoring port could potentially take us down close to or even below that five-year trigger and therefore these kind of sites are very important within the the overall context of a need to provide landfill as a short to medium term solution. So what this this scheme would actually do would actually allow for an additional permitted void capacity and Emerson were permitted because while it's an existing site, it would be have with plan permission, it would become back come back into the fold for assessment as part of the monitoring report and it would add approximately 1.1 years to that figure and therefore return the void capacity at this moment to just over the seven year figure. So that, that is a, an important figure to note, but in terms of need, because it would provide an appropriate, um, in our opinion, uh, interim position to address the short term needs of the region in the lead up to 2024-25, but without actually compromising you know, the long term need for appropriate solutions, which would still seek to um, you know, push the treatment of res residual waste up the waste hierarchy. So within that um, uh, in place, we consider that um, providing appropriate controls being put in place to address identified impacts arising for development. The need for development is something that should be given significant weight, as would its compliance with policies SP19 and generally with PPW and guidance in towards zero waste. So then moving on to the actual um, 
issues its, itself. Drainage and flooding, the, um, the, the site generally has, has, um, has operated in, in general conformity with, with its previous consents, but there have been some issues of concern through the course of this application that um, our drainage team, which Justin is here to answer any questions you may have, um, particularly regard to issues of surface water runoff, potential contamination from that, um, and particularly onto Barron Road, which is the um, the road that runs between um, 890 and 891 and 871. But as the report identifies, subject to a number of different conditions that will um, require adequate and continuous monitoring of those um, those matters in terms of surface water, is considered that the long term drainage of site is, is acceptable, subject to those conditions being um, being met. And on that basis, there would be no increase in the risk of pollution or unacceptable impact from drainage arising from the extension of time for landfill at the site. In terms of visual amenity, the presentation on the screen um, that you had yesterday just briefly seeks to, to show the site itself. Um, as, as I talked about before, it's, it's primarily the, the change is the fact that this area in the centre won't be filled anymore and it will be a, a change in profile and a very ch slight change in terms of profile of tip um, 89 over top, but what it won't be doing, it, it won't be increasing the overall heights. So the images in terms of the, the viewpoints, it's difficult to see on the slides, I'm sure, but you, you may wish to, to screen them. But ultimately, you can see the um, the, the site is, is, is at the top here, um, particularly and you've got tip 87, 871 over on the right hand side and you've got the existing um, site over here. So you can see the, the, the face of um, the existing landfill here. So effectively, the existing um, uh, completed 891 will we'll come down and then we'll come back up to 89 here. So we slight, slightly different profile, as I say, because it, w it won't be filling in the void that was previously proposed. OK, uh, just just to interrupt you just for a second. Yes, of course, Chair. Just, just to um, to remind members that if they can't see, because on the screen that you've shared, it is quite small, but they will have had the presentation so they can always go back to the presentation if they want to enlarge or look in, in more depth. Oh, yeah, that's, I, I can that's also better, I can like also zoom focus. in. Yeah, it goes out of focus a little bit there. Yeah, I, I don't know whether that works at all, but that's if, fine. If, if, if anyone wants me to focus on or try and do more, I, I can try and do that if, if there's any questions. Um, that's by okay. all means, Chair. I might be able to do it later in the questions as well by I'm zooming sure in. members can do it on questions. their devices. Yeah, OK. OK, great. Thank you, Chair. Sorry, sorry. No, 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 <laughs> not a problem. You're the other chair. You're more <laughs> important than me. So in terms... <laughs> In terms of um, the visual amenity side of things, the, the report goes into those changes and I say that there are changes to the, the, the finished profiles that result from this scheme, but generally the, the conclusions of the report are um, that those would not actually have any greater um, impact um, on the area, notwithstanding the fact that they would be a, a different profile and, and therefore wouldn't have any negative or adverse impacts both on the countryside itself or in terms of the special landscape areas nearby. In terms of residential amenity, which are the, the, the main issues um, that, that are probably of um, concern related to the, the site, um, we first covered dust and generally speaking, there, there's not considered to be a, a, a dust issue at the site, um, generally because there's, as long as there's compliance with the approved scheme, which will continue to be conditioned, um, any issues that are, were to arise from, from dust as a, as a consequence of works at the site could be appropriately controlled through those conditions and any necessary action if in the event of material breaches. Um, very similar situation for noise. Obviously, things would continue for um, an, another three years in terms of the operations for landfill and a bit another year for restoration. So that while there'd be an extension of the, the time itself, um, Generally speaking, the um, conditions that we've got, which will be reinforced as part of this consent, have proved adequate to ensure that noise doesn't have any significant adverse impacts. Um, so therefore, again, um, there's no, no objection from that. Environmental health are satisfied in, in that respect as well. The, the, the main issue of concern that officers have had and, and the local, um, locals and local members have raised does relate to odour at the site. And, and I'm sure this will be one that we can have a, a more um, discussion about and we'll hear from both the local members but we also have my environmental health colleague here to um, provide any any um, assistance in that regard. Okay. So the need to ensure there isn't an adverse impact from odour has been highlighted by a lot of people as I said and, and that is notable because this time last year um, 
and, and it's a, a time of year when odour often can become a problem due to climatic conditions. Um, there were objections and, and quite a lot of issues that needed investigation. And odour management at the site, because this is a permitted site, um, would normally be regulated by Natural Resources Wales. But last last year, because of the um, the number of issues raised, both Kamal and Shear as our mineral advisors, and Tom is here today as well, um, and um, Environmental Health Team, which uh, Kelvin and Leah are representing, did become involved because of the scale of those complaints. And actually, it did in, it, it led to the service by Environmental Health, quite unusually, of an abatement notice, which did require the applicant to undertake remedial measures to seek to reduce odour issues at the site. Um, and the report talked about the, the different things that were, were undertaken there. And, and largely those those issues were undertaken and the the um the OD issues were were addressed but in recent weeks which does coincide with the same kind of time last year i say with the climactic conditions odor issues have have arisen again um and therefore you know they they are being investigated by natural resources wells and environmental health have been made aware of those issues as well and, and will be looking into those further um, as a consequence but um while Environmental Health have expressed concern about the fact that odour issues are ongoing at the site, they, they are also very appreciative of, of the arguments that I've talked about in terms of the, the need for this facility and the need for continued provision of land at the site up until 2023. But obviously it's also important because that is, it's only, and emphasis on the word only, but it's, it's only a further three year period. Um, and within that context, um, what the previous consent had was a requirement to comply with an odour management plan. But what you'll see from the conditions attached, um, recommended to be attached to this, um, this approval, which is condition 21 to 23, we have drafted up a set of what we consider, excuse me, what we should consider to be a, a set of, of both new, robust and enforceable conditions, which are, are very um, rigid and robust, covering all matters to do with odour management and both from a planning and environmental health and, and waste um, operatives um, uh, perspective, we're more than satisfied that within the context of the need for the facility, that those conditions would provide a, a very clear and robust set of, um, of controls that would allow us to, to address any odour issues arising at the site. And the report at page 33 briefly details what they are. So the first one is they they need to comply with their odour management plan. And that will be as it's currently approved or as it will be um, amended following review under condition, the, the second condition on that um, screen, which is condition 22, which actually does require every 12 months effectively a review of their odour management plan to ensure that it remains fit for purpose and addresses all and any issues at the site. And that seeks to tie it also in with the fact that there's the odour management plan under the environmental permitting procedure as well. And then the, th the third listed condition there also effectively gives us a, a further string to our enforcement bow, so to speak, um, which in the event of what we feel would be a justified complaint, um, we can actually, as a, as a planning authority, request that the operator undertakes a full investigation into the cause of the odour and report um, and make any necessary amendments to their odour management plan or to the site operations under an agreed action plan. And it's a very tight restricted condition that one is. We don't have that at the moment, but this, um, you know, these three conditions together individually and cumulatively will in our submission um, ensure that we have the most ro robust odour management possible at this site, which will balance with the fact that we consider that there's a need to continue this site for the next three years. So having regard to those controls, but also additional regulatory mechanisms through the environmental permitting process, um, we are satisfied that the proposal would, would accord with planning policy um, and therefore be um, acceptable. Uh, other matters in terms of the report, talks about ecology and biodiversity, and very much in summary, um, we've had some additional informa information submitted as part of the application and both NRW and um, our ecologists are happy subject to conditions being imposed in the application that the proposed restoration after aftercare will deliver a satisfactory restoration of the site um, and therefore it, it will um, comply with the, the relevant policies in the local development plan. Similarly, in terms of highways, 
this scheme doesn't have any materially greater impact than the approved scheme. And indeed, as the report says, the number of movements actually um, to and from the site has been substantially less than um, than is actually approved. The, the only main issues really related to um, the, the surface water issues on the road related to drainage. And again, as I said, those are covered by um, the relevant conditions un, under surface water drainage and, and subject to those were satisfied there'd be no adverse highway impacts um, from the development either. And finally, Chair, in terms of um, other matters which are addressed on page, the top of page 36, um, local ward members have asked what would happen should this application be refused? So what, um, and, and I, I would also hasten to add that um, Councillor Walcock uh, asked a supplementary question which is covered in the amendment sheet mm -hmm. that also asked the question about um, a situation where we could potentially serve a stop notice. So what the report and the, the amendment sheet effectively says is, should permission be refused by members today, the applicant would um, obviously have a right of appeal against such a refusal. At that, at that time, we as an authority would then need to, to consider whether it were expedient to take any action against the operator in continuing to um, uh, undertake any operations at the site, should they do, choose to do so. Now, um, Councillor Walker asked um, whether um, we would, in the event of an appeal, whether it would be appropriate to serve a stop notice to prevent any such work going on. Um, and what the, the amendment sheet comments does say is, yes, we could serve a stop notice. It's always um, part of the enforcement armory, so to speak, but that can only be served um, alongside an enforcement notice. An enforcement action on a site such as this is, a, is undoubtedly very, very complex. And it's not something that um, I have ever been involved in. And I think it would need very considerable you know, careful consideration as to how we might do that. So what the report says effectively is we, we would, um, primarily we would engage with the operator in the event that members were, were refusing the application, which obviously the recommendation is to approve. But if, if um, members were to go against officer's recommendation, we would engage with the operator first to, to, to identify effectively what actions they were taking, whether they would proceed to um, effectively look to formulate a, a, an alternative restoration plan based upon no further waste being imported. And therefore we'd implement the, the conditions on, on the, the early consent to, to get that restoration scheme imposed. Or if they chose to appeal, whether they would be proceed, proceeding to continue landfilling, because if they did, we would then need to consider, and I think the best way to do it would be for officers to bring back a further report to planning committee, identifying the issues involved and what action would be appropriate, which could, should it, should it be necessary, could consider an enforcement notice and a stop notice. But I say because of the complexities associated with it and the need to, to prepare plans relating to very different finished profiles because no more landfill would be coming in, it is very complex, both in terms of landscape stuff, but also all manner of technical issues to do with drainage and leachate ma management and gas wells, of which I, I wouldn't profess to be an expert in in, in any respect. Um, but luckily, I have people who are. So ultimately, in a situation where we feel as, as officers that there is a need for this facility because of the overall void space, um, it is needing, you know, refusing this would take the overall void space below the required threshold. We as officers at this moment feel it's appropriate to grant plan permission for this with the robust conditions in place. Um, however, should members um, feel otherwise, um, ultimately we engage with members uh, with the operator and I would recommend we'd come back with, with a further report on such matters. But um, as the conclusion states, we're satisfied um, that there is a need for facility, all the impacts are and can be addressed through condition chair. So the recommendation on um, page 37 Seven. is to, to approve subject to obviously the Welsh Minister's first withdrawal of their holding direction. Thank you, Chair. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Ball. Uh, it's a very complex issue and a very uh, finely balanced juggling act to meet the needs of somewhere to deposit our waste that we are still receiving and also to um, calm and uh, give the residents as best a quality of life as they can possibly have. So that's the very <laughs> difficult decision we have here today. Uh, officers re recommending uh, approval on this. So how I'm going to manage the speakers, um, I'm going to call um, 
Matt Nicholson first, as I normally do with members of the public or outside of the council, so to speak. Then I will call the two local members who are not members of the planning committee, uh, Councillor Purcell and Councillor Reynolds. And then because he submitted his question in advance, uh, I will call on Councillor Woolcock um, uh, to go through his question um, and then I will open it up to committee. So that's the order that I'm going to do this in. So first of all, um, Mr Matt Nicholson representing uh, the um, site operator, um, you will now have five minutes to address committee and I will leave you in the hands of Jane to tell you uh, how much time you have left. Jane, would you start the clock whenever Matt Nicholson is ready? Yes, Chair. So if Thank Mr you. Nichols wants to start, I will remind you when there's one minute left, Mr Nicholson. Uh, OK, all right. Uh, th thank you and th th thank you, Chair. Um, uh, good, good morning, uh, members. Just, just a second, Mr Nicholson. I'm, I'm so sorry to interrupt you straight away, but I can see that Councillor Purcell is leaning in and having difficulty hearing. Is there anything we can do to assist you, Councillor Purcell? IT have given me a lovely little gadget. Right. Um, I'll hold it right next to my ear and I should be OK. <laughs> OK, I, I just could hear, could see you. Yeah, sort of I was straining. It was, it was muffled. It, 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 it is quite, it is quite before. muffled, Matt. So I don't know whether you've got your microphone close enough to your mouth. It was quite muffled. Yeah. Uh, OK, I shall lean in a bit if that helps. OK, I'm uh, sorry to interrupt. So, Jane, if you could just start yeah. the clock again then, please. Yes, by all means. Thank you. Um, OK. All right, well, hopefully you can all, all hear me, but um, uh, so, so yes, uh, my name is Matt Nicholson and I'm the Estates Manager uh, for FCC Environment who operates the site. Uh, and I'm here to speak in support of our Section 73 application, which has been submitted to extend the operational life of Paul Watkin landfill. Um, as you've just heard from the presentation and as set out in the committee report, the site is an existing operational landfill. Uh, it was developed within former colliery workings and provides a strategically important disposal point for existing waste streams. And as you heard in the presentation, it provides uh, a valuable contribution to the region's available void space in the short term. Um, in addition to its planning consent, the site is also operated in accordance with an environmental permit. And the site is progressively capped and restored as the infilling is completed. And we are now coming towards the end of the infilling and, and therefore the final completion of the site. It was just that a short extension of time was required to complete that. Um, the operational practices that we use on the site are in line with our environmental permit and they seek to minimise amenity impacts by keeping the operational working area as small as is practically possible. And also we cap areas immediately upon reaching their final levels and also we are maintaining active gas extraction uh, across the site. The application that's been submitted, which is seeking the short extension of operational life to the end of 2023, um, is based upon forecasted waste inputs and uh, an overall reduction in the void from that that was previously consented. So the revised final contours actually represent a minimum volume to produce a suitable final landform that facilitates sustainable drainage and stability throughout the closure and aftercare phase. To not grant planning permission uh, would require the immediate closure of the site, which would result in the loss of an important disposal point for existing waste streams. And consequently, it would also result in an unsuitable landform that would present problems for sustainable surface water management and slope stability. This in turn would cause issues for other environmental control systems for leachate and landfill gas, and therefore as an approach is not ideal and hence we'd put forward the revision to the contours uh, for a short period of time to, to bring the site to a, to a satisfactory position to close. Um, we obviously welcome the officer's recommendation for approval and we support the recommendation that planning permission is granted uh, subject to the conditions as, as set out. Um, I'm quite happy to answer any questions that the committee might have uh, regarding the application. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Nicholson. Um, we don't normally come back to speakers uh, with questions. Uh, normally it's just your 
the five minutes. You're perfectly welcome to stay, obviously, for the rest of the meeting, but um, your participation so is at an end, so to speak, and we will just okay. take on board. Um, if any member hasn't heard anything, that is a different matter. You may ask for clarification, but not to go on to a separate question that type of thing. OK, so yeah. thank you very much, Mr Nicholson, for attending our planning uh, our committee this morning. So um, having heard the speaker for the uh, site, we're now going to go on to um, the speakers that have asked to come who are members of council. So I'm going to call on Councillor Purcell first and then Councillor uh, Sonia Reynolds uh, to speak afterwards. I do not put the clock on members of council. However, uh, please be minded, it's around five minutes, OK? So, Councillor Purcell, please. Thank you very much for that, Chair. Um, obviously, there's several points that I want to make on behalf of the community, but is it OK for me to ask a question first and then go on to say what I want to say about the community? Uh, it's it's not usual, Councillor So if you could leave your questions until after your statement, I'll allow you to come back to ask questions. That's no problem. OK, so what I'll do is I'll just read what I've prepared, which okay. contains the question, and yep. then perhaps Steve can come back and answer the question at the end. So yep. the question I wanted to ask was, um, it says the permission expired in September 2018. And when Steve first began speaking, he said that despite that, the authority had continued to monitor. But then later on <clears throat> in his presentation, he said the conditions will enable the site to come back into monitoring. So I really need clarification of that, that on behalf of the community um, later on after I finish. Yeah, we'll do that. Point. And I also wondered what the legal situation was if they had been um, functioning without planning permission, um, having expired in 2018. <clears throat> However, the main points I wanted to make is really to do with the confidence that the community has in the council and in NRW Wales um, based on historical performance of this site. So there are many references throughout the report to concerns raised by highways, for example, on page 16, biodiversity, 17, etc. However, we are to be assured by officers that these issues could be satisfactorily resolved by the application of conditions. But we, as the community, would need to have confidence that these conditions would be rigorously enforced and crucially would work. So looking at that, I'm just considering the management to date of ODA. The report refers to policies, including UK law, Waste Regulations 2011, which says waste management should be undertaken without causing nuisance through ODA. And you report that an ODOT management plan has been in place since January 2020. Now, that is absolutely crucial, that fact, because despite that ODOT management plan being in place, you report that ODOT has been the repeated source of complaint from residents. You also report that despite the existence of this ODOT management plan, an abatement notice had to be served by environmental health although you don't give us a date. So the first crucial question my community would like to ask, how effective has that ODA management plan been? Bearing in mind that although you've referred to historic complaints, there was a complaint from my resident reserved, received on November the 23rd, 2020, logged with the council, and a further incident reported on November 26th, logged with NRW and with the council, in both cases, the resident has received no information as to what action will be taken by either authority. And I'm quite sure Councillor Reynolds will clarify a lot more about this as the impact on her community. So what I'm basically saying is we've had an odour management plan in existence since January 2020. And yet we have these repeated uh, complaints now locked as advised no response from anybody as to what is going to happen. Now, on page 32, you report that environmental health are concerned about the odour, but would be happy if new enforceable conditions were applied. So the next crucial question I would want to ask is, 
Can you explain how those conditions outlined on page 33 differ from what has been happening to date? I'm particularly concerned that condition 21, page 42 states, all operations shall be carried out in a full accordance with the ODA management plan dated January 2020. In relation to which plan, you state that planning could take formal action should ODA issues, and I'm quoting, not be handled expeditiously. I looked that up, it means swiftly. So planning could take formal action should ODA issues not be ex handled expeditiously, and yet my resident has no response from his complaints on November the 23rd or the 26th. And despite the existence of this plan since January 2020, there was still a need to serve an enforcement notice. And the fact that my residents report suffering up until November the 26th. So what really worries us is you're referring to this ODA management plan as being the way all of this is going to be dealt with. And yet it's been in existence since January 2020 and all these problems have still occurred. So I would, um, so I would submit with great um, tact and respect that this isn't working. So how could we as a community have the necessary confidence to support this application? I think to be quite honest, we'd be more inclined to support it if the ODA management plan hadn't been in existence, but because it has, and it obviously hasn't been working, I think the community has every right to be very worried. So now we come on to the question that Councillor Richards and I asked about what would happen if permission was refused. Before reading the detailed history of this site, for which we're very grateful, as included in the officer's report, we were hoping as ward councillors to be sufficiently reassured as to be able to support approval of the application. However, we would have hoped to have had on page 36, when you answer our question, some assurances that it was necessary to support this application in order to protect the well-being of our residents, because that's the bottom line as far as I'm concerned. I need to support the well-being of my residents, convince me and therefore convince the committee that it's necessary to support this application in order to protect the well-being of the residents of my community and Neath Port Albert, and I would be convinced. But no, on page 36, as far as I can understand, not being an expert, the report simply states how the negative implications of refusing this application would affect the South West Wales region and this council. However, I'm not speaking today as a member of council or by default responsible for the South West Wales region, I'm speaking as the councillor for Reed of Rowan pointed out. It is galling, and I'm sure the members of the public who are requesting to watch this meeting after this is concluded, it is galling to the nth degree to have somebody say, well, you put up with it so far, now we're just going to extend it just for a short time, just another few years, despite the fact they were told this was going to end. And I want you just to understand that if I have an email from a resident on November the 23rd that says that his four year old child is awake in the night saying, Daddy, I feel sick, I can't sleep, then it is absolutely beholden on me. And I beg the committee to support me on this to say that from our residents' past experience and up until this very month, we are not concerned, we're not convinced that this is going to be working well and we ask the committee to support our community and to consider refusal of the application. Thank you. Thank you Councillor Purcell. Um, I, I, I'm minded that Councillor Reynolds would probably have maybe similar questions uh, or statements. So I'm going to go to Councillor Reynolds now and then we'll deal with all the questions from the ex expert officers that we have here. I've noted the questions down and I dare say you have as well, so we won't miss any of them. Uh, Councillor Reynolds, could you also address committee now then please? Thank you very much, Chair. 
Um, and I'm not going to repeat in detail what Councillor Purcell has just said, because some of those questions are questions that I would also like to hear the answers to. So I'm not going to go over the same ground in detail. However, mm -hmm. um, I'm the the, uh, the tip is not in in my ward, but we're closest to the tip and the prevailing winds and weather conditions mean that the communities of GCG, Comgorse and further along the valley occasionally, and I know my colleague is here from uh, Lower Brenamon, but up to Lower Brenamon and into Tygwaith where I live just over the border from my ward, you know, we do smell it there. So it is impacting much more widely in the communities that I serve. The report clearly identifies uh, all the policies and laws which relate to health and well-being of residents, but as Councillor Purcell says, doesn't actually indicate uh, how the extension to this tip will impact on those residents um, in terms of their health and well-being. It just talks about managing the odour. The whole focus is an economic one, but it is short term. Um, or it, it's a it's a it's a, a focus on law relating to how the waste is 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 delivered. Now it is short term. Our community has for many years been the the valley of the tip and the pit. Mm. We are finally beginning to get rid of the East Pit site and have restoration there and the possibility of a country park and the possibility of developing one of the few industries that's available to us, and that's hospitality and tourism and active leisure. This tip impacts directly on the ability of the community to develop those services and to move forward with a real economic development in its area. We are the gateway to the Black Mountain, but no one wants to stop in our community because we have a landfill tip and there is an odour. So my focus is to give a flavour of the views and feelings of local residents and to put their case for something which has existed in our community for over 40 years. And the odour has been there throughout. It is not a recent phenomenon, as has been indicated. There were times in the past, at one point during the foot and mouth outbreak, there were real issues with this landfill uh, related to that outbreak and what was buried at the site. The waste that moves there has been changed now, but this is a long term issue. It comes and goes. And yes, it is seasonal, but it's still you know, ongoing throughout the year. We had complaints in May of this year. Uh, so, you know, it's not something which is just limited to certain times of the year and it hasn't gone away. It's been something I've been aware of as a, of a local resident ever since I moved to the area in the early 80s. And since I've been a councillor in 2017, it has formed a regular part of my local work. I would say I probably throughout my period of time in, in office as a councillor have received at least one complaint per month about Puffer Watkin, odour and other issues, droppage on the highway uh, from the lorries, etc. One of my residents wrote to me in the last couple of days. He stated, I can't attend the planning committee. I've uh, I've got to work. However, I live two miles away from the tip, from the site in GCG, and on times I can't bear the smell. Frequent phone calls to complain and endless case numbers are given, yet an extension is actually being considered, putting the health and safety of our community at even greater risk. Another resident, and I've, I've picked the ones who use language that is appropriate to the committee as opposed to the much more abusive ones that I can receive, to be quite honest, and the ones that are much more vocal about the council because there is a lack of understanding of the role between the council and NRW. Um, but this one says, I live a mile away. 
We've all had enough of this smell. As I've said, it's my home. We as residents have complained so many times, had our reference numbers. We've had the newspapers here. The Welsh TV News did a piece last year and we still have nothing done. Don't tell me the local authority care for residents of Pungorse and GCG. The surrounding areas are still, or the surrounding areas are still nothing is being done. Just another extension again and no care for us. So there are you know, it's, it is a real focus of concern in our community and both of those were received in this last week. So, as I said, not a local issue. The severe odour uh, really started to impact in, in October 2019, so the recent issues were highlighted in 2019. This work from October through to December, high levels of complaints, NRW at the Liaison Committee made great efforts to, to, to suggest that this was coming from other sources, that it was possibly, as they thought it possibly had been in the past, from muck spreading locally, or in one case, the suggestion was tyre burning. We had reports from Garnant and my fellow councillor, Councillor Kevin Madge in Carmarthenshire made a formal complaint. Um, and that's 2.5 to 3 miles north of the site. There were also complaints from across the rest of the community. Walkers on the Barren Mountain, on the Garth Mountain and Gooded Mountains also contacted me to complain. Drivers on the A474 sent in complaints. On the 5th of December, the headmaster of GCG Primary School rang me. His parents were complaining at the doorway and they, the children were eating their lunch or eating their, their meals in the dining hall with the smell in the dining hall of the school. It is not just a minor problem. This is a major problem. And lack of action from Natural Resources Wales and local, local people means that we've, they've lost faith in the system. So people actually stopped reporting to NRW because what they discovered was that their reports weren't being uh, recorded. I had to instruct residents to make sure they asked for an incident number and were clear about the requirement to have this noted. And eventually I've had to ask that they email complaints in so that there is a clear evidence trail and that has been happening more in this last month. When our local member of Senneth, uh, Jeremy Miles, contacted NRW in response to a question from myself, the CEO of NRW came back at the beginning of November and said they had received no complaints. Now, you know, that goes against everything that residents were saying to me about what was happening. I can only praise our environmental health uh, department who moved in uh, around the end of November and early December, who travelled round our community to talk to residents and put their minds at rest that the odour was not harmful. It was disgusting, but it wasn't harmful. And who did some excellent work on the site to identify the issues that, um, that weren't being identified and dealt with by NRW. They discovered, and it was reported directly at the, and it's minuted in the 13th of February Liaison Committee, that failures to cover cells when not actively working could, were considered to be part of the problem. And part of this was down to the fact that the actual number of lorries coming to the site were 20 to 25 per day, not the 56 noted in the report. And that the drop in waste coming to the site meant that, that the areas weren't being capped or filled. Uh, and therefore, you know, there was a more chance of odour and more problems with the site. They identified that the leachate had increased quite dramatically, almost doubled at one point, uh, and the lagoons and other areas were having to be pumped and more tankers used. And they identified the issues that gave rise to seven new gas wells drilled and finalised late in December 2019. That resulted in some 200 cubic metres of additional gas being collected from the site. And when I asked the question as to what would have been happening to that gas before, I was told it was escaping into the atmosphere. Now, you know, 
I would like to know from uh, our people and from the site, and I asked the question of site officers at the Liaison Committee, what the implications are for that gas being released and why it wasn't dealt with earlier. This has been going on throughout 2020. As I said, there were complaints in May. Complaints rose again in October this year as the weather came down and the smells were held in. NRW unresponsive. We are looking at a situation where maybe this council would not even consider an extension because of the way the planning report reads if it wasn't for the TAN 21 requirements of void. That requirement, I would postulate, is already out of date. It has been surpassed by the recycling and by the activity going on. So our council does not use that site. We do not use landfill at all. Recycling has reached that point. It is clear, and from my discussions with Assembly members, that TAN 21 hasn't been updated that recently. So, as I say, I would postulate that is out of date. It's a clear indication that the slow rate of fill may align with odour, and that that aligns with the fact that there isn't enough waste. There is an indication given at the Liaison Committee that there's been a decrease of staff at the site. And I asked at that point and would continue to ask if that was money saving and what impact that had on operational standards and how that was impacting on the site. So because the site, the site is becoming less viable. Are you coming closely yeah. to the end? Because I know I don't put time limits on councillors, but yeah. I, I do think you overstepped the five minutes, definitely. I'm sorry. No but, problem. Uh, it is it is important and it does does pertain do. to the planning. Yes. yes. And we are, you know, whilst we don't need to look from a parochial perspective, we know this site is, is in competition with other sites. That was also stated at the Liaison Committee. And the uh, the other two sites, one is as uh, um, looking at its viability. And I would suggest this site has possible issues with viability, given the decrease in waste, and that if there is a review of the Tier St John site in uh, Tier, Tier John site in 2022, does that mean that they might go and leave us with a further extension at this site needed in order to maintain the void? So, I would say quite clearly that we, we need to benefit from refusing plan of planning commission on this site to our valley not being the valley with the tip and the pit and moving forward from that so i'd like this planning committee to consider a refusal to the application and to consider the well-being of residents and the future economy of the upper Ammon valley and i'd also if that is not possible because of the considerations of the void I'd like to think that planning committee would consider that having worked within the constraints that planning must operate because of the long term odour issues and the very real impact on residents that they would prevent or put in place some sort of condition or requirement that this would be the final ever planning application for waste tipping at this site and that there would be no consideration of any further extension and that the valley can move on to look at the restoration plans put forward by the company that could actually benefit the, the residents and are talking about cycle paths which would meet the needs as are being already forwarded to our uh, active travel plan uh, that the residents would want and also further tourism. Thank you. Yep. OK, Councillor Reynolds, thank you very much. Uh, and Councillor Purcell, both been very eloquent as to your residents' uh, views to you. I'm going to go to officers now because uh, both of you have raised questions that I do believe uh, need uh, the detailed answers of our experts. So um, I'm going to call um, 
the older management plan was raised by Councillor Purcell. Steve, who who have we got to answer that? Um, well, I'll um, I'll start first, and I'll try and go through some some of the matters, and and then I imagine I'll probably need um, some additional input from both Tom Boothroyd at Command and Shear just on some of the technical points, okay. and from uh, Kelvin um, in terms of the environmental health side of things. So, okay, I. I I, I will do my best, um, uh, Council Person and Reynolds, to, to cover the issues you've raised. You know, you've both eloquently raised the issues of concern on behalf of the community. And, you know, and I, I'm more than aware of the issues you've raised. Um, but as I say, you, you put them forward very, very eloquently. And I certainly understand the need, particularly, um, as Lynette, you've said, in terms of the, the issues of confidence. And I, and I absolutely get that. So I'll try and cover the bits I've, I've, I've written down and we'll see where, we, where it goes. Yeah, we'll, so, we'll move on. Yeah. Yeah, so so um, Council Purcell, I mean, you, you talked to start, start with in terms of the fact that it expired in 2018 um, and then you asked about the, the back into monitoring question that, that might have just been, um, I, I can't remember my exact words and it may have just been um, not necessarily using the right words. I think the most important thing really is, yes, it did expire in 2018, but it has been monitored since then, including as you've both referred to in terms of the, the site liaison committee, for example, earlier this year. Um, I think the point of bringing it back into control is more about um, because it doesn't have a planning commission at the moment, all we can really do at the moment would be to, to take formal enforcement action through a, an enforcement notice and or in addition to that as a stop notice as uh, Councillor Walcock has asked. But what granting plan permission as is recommended by officers would do is bring it back into full control because it would have a new valid plan permission where we would have a set of, particularly regard to ODA, but all conditions, a set of robust and enforceable conditions. That is really um, important because when you breach a planning condition, we can serve a breach of condition notice on an operator, which therefore requires them to, to comply with that condition. And if they fail to do so, then it becomes an offence for which they can be prosecuted. There is no right of appeal against a breach of condition notice, where there is a there is an appeal against an enforcer notice, which can take some considerable time to um, to, to deal with through um, through an appeal process. So that's what I I meant in terms of bringing it back into into control effectively, permeating through both of your um, uh, your your um, that your views is very much the issue about confidence, and and I do get the fact that your the concerns stem from um, perhaps an overlap. Um, insofar as, as as the report emphasises, and and Kelvin will, will no doubt comment as well as this is a site that is largely to be regulated by Natural Resources Wales, and mm -hmm. it's quite clear from what both of you have said is that your confidence in Natural Resources Wales to robustly enforce the permitting procedures, you know, is you you don't you have no confidence in NRW completely. I, I get that, and and Councillor Reynolds, when you talk about the CEO having written to Jerry Marr saying there's been no complaints. Um, I'm shocked, if I'm honest, that an, a letter could go out from CEO saying that when it's quite blatantly clear that there have been complaints. Um, and I'm very surprised that NRW would say that because we all know that those complaints have been made um, to NRW um, and, and at times through to us as well. And most notably this time last year when we, and I say we, we as an authority, Environmental Health did do the work you said, um, Councillor Reynolds, and, and I'm, I'm very pleased that you talked about, you know, you've given praise to effectively Kelvin's team in terms of the work they did, because they, they you know, they are a very good set of officers and they're operating, you know, now especially in incredibly challenging circumstances, but they are still um, very strong in, in their investigation of these matters when they feel that there is a, in, in this case, an odour issue that did um, Re, uh, result in action being taken. Not necessarily NRW would have would have liked us doing that. I hasten to add, but um, it was felt at that time it was necessary and appropriate for this authority to take that action. And I think that that um, is really important to say in terms of how I see it as a planning officer recommending plan permission on this application with this set of conditions, because the set of new conditions. Um, they are very different to what was before. So going back to, to Councillor Purcell, you, you kind of asked the question, you know, how effective has it been and more to predict, how do these conditions differ? Mm. The most important thing is effectively on the old consent um, that has since expired, it effectively required them to um, comply with the odour management plan. 
although that was an older version of an odour management plan, not the newer version of an odour management plan, which is under the permitting procedure that NRW require. And therefore there was a disconnect in that respect. And because the consent has expired, we couldn't serve a breach of condition notice on failure to comply with that odour management plan because there was no longer that okay. consent to enforce against. So um, the reasons these differ is, is one is the first condition, condition 21, that says comply with the odour management plan. It also requires um, them to comply with the, the new version of the odour management plan, which is the one that's been approved by NRW as well, but also to comply with any future versions of that odour management plan that would be approved under condition 22 which requires that OMP, sorry for acronyms, to be updated every 12 months to reflect the full understanding of the of the issues at the site, how it's operating, any issues that have risen, any complaints, how they've investigated them, all those kind of things. And it's it is important because it then is a continuous regular review of that of um, management plan that gives us the ability to then a get it updated and b enforce against that most up-to-date operational management um, odor management plan what the conditions also do excuse me for looking on the side um it also effectively requires them um to respond so for example condition 23 requires them within a week which is a very short time scale to respond if if we feel that there is a justified complaint we can actually as a planning authority and this doesn't necessarily even involve environmental health to start with we as a planning authority can write straight away to an operator to say condition 23 requires the following you do it now you've got a week effectively to deal with that and, it, and it's very detailed in terms of what it needs to do um, if they fail to do that then we can take action but it actually also um, includes an extra, both condition 22 and 23, include an extra um, uh, robust enforcement that effectively says, if they fail to do that, operation shall cease until such time as they have implemented what's necessary in terms of the action management plan or revised the odour management plan. Those conditions are very robust. They are, sub, you know, they're significantly different to anything that's been on this um, on this site before. Um, and when you take the fact that this is a planning set of conditions, um, normally we wouldn't seek to um, duplicate conditions or controls that are elsewhere, uh, that are put elsewhere. You shouldn't really duplicate regulatory regimes. Um, but in this case, we feel it is absolutely essential to do so because it gives us as a local planning authority mm -hmm. the ability to robustly um, enforce these conditions both through service of notices if necessary through seeking to require them to cease operations if they fail to do so and if and again if they fail even further to do that to take action prosecution action as well we as an authority would do that that would be in consultation and liaison with our environmental health colleagues because effectively when reports and responses are received they would come to us as a local authority not to natural resources wales and Kelvin's team would then review those. And, I, and that's why I'm really pleased, uh, Councillor Reynolds, that you, you, you've effectively demonstrated, or I, I think that you've effectively said that you have faith in our environmental health colleagues to investigate robustly these matters, but you certainly don't in NRW. Now, in this case, this would be Kelvin's team that would be reviewing all that information in the event of complaints coming in, in liaison with Thomas, um, uh, Tom and, and Hugh's team, at Kamal and Shira, they are minerals advisors as well. Um, and on that basis, that's why we feel that the recommendation to approve is the right one, because while, while you said that we hadn't necessarily considered kind of um, in the in the um, responses that we were approving this to protect the residents, and I do I do apologize perhaps if that didn't come across clearly in the conclusions, because actually that has very much been at the top of our um, uh, list in terms of trying to control the impacts to ensure that we are protecting the amenity residents. And don't get me wrong, your view, and I understand it, is the best way to protect amenity residents is not have a landfill. And I get that. And that is a decision that needs to be made today in assessing this in the round. But from an officer perspective, we can't just take a view that says, let's just get rid of it because it's it may have issues. We have to put it in the round and say, well, there is a need for this facility in the short to medium term up to the end of 2023 has been proposed for landfill capacity as a as part of the overarching national waste waste strategy and the, the waste 
handling in the region. Um, and that's why we feel that this is the right balance, the robust enforceable set of conditions that will be both planning and environmental health led. Natural resources wells would still have their own controls, but um, let's face it, we we would largely be taking the lead on this on these conditions as far as I'm concerned now, because you've demonstrated in your submissions that you don't trust NRW. We would still be telling them what we're doing and they may not like what we're doing, but we'll be telling what we're doing. We'll be trying to do it um, co in a coordinated fashion with them if issues arise. But we do feel that this is the, the, the right solution which balances the need for the facility with the need to protect the, the residents in that short to medium term. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, just in terms of other matters raised, you talk about, um, Councillor Reynolds, about TAN 21 being out of date um, and the fact that MPT, we don't use Putlawakan anymore and, and the like. And, and I do get that, but it is the current policy document. It hasn't been um, withdrawn. It hasn't been amended. It is, we are statutorily required to have regard to TAN 21, Plan Policy Wales and um, towards zero waste in terms of the national waste strategy. That is the policy context we have to have regard to. And on top of that, you've got a local development plan that allocates this site for provision of landfill for, for the plan period. So within that policy context, while I understand the point you're making, that is the context we need to make this decision against. Um, and finally, you've also talked about, you know, if um, if it wouldn't be possible to refuse, if members were minded to agree with officers, can this be the final ever proposal? Um, you know, I understand where you're coming from there because I know the same thing has been said previously for, for East Pitt um, and, and that did rumble on a, a, a number of times. We, we are towards the end of that procedure as, uh, process as you talk in East Pitt. I appreciate your concerns about that this being the valley of, of the, um, the landfill and the pit. Um, we can't say as officers that we will not consider anything in the future because we, as an authority, we cannot refuse to accept any application on anything because we can't do that. Um, however, I'm pretty confident when I can say that this could take to the end of 2023. It is proposing actually a reduction in landfill at this site when they didn't need to do that. They could have sought to extend the consent with with the larger capacity that it previously had. Um, and I think when we when we'd be getting towards the end of 2023, we'd be in a much um, different situation. And, I, and I'm fairly confident to say we would be highly unlikely to be supporting extensions beyond that date, having regard to um, towards zero waste. So that that's my view as a planner. Um, I've got some yeah. I've got a hand and some nodding from Tom at yeah. Commandership, who perhaps I, can come I, in from, from a waste ask perspective. Thomas, yes, I, and, he's, and, and then <laughs> and then perhaps after Tom has spoken, perhaps. Um, Kelvin can come in From and perhaps try and, and yeah. perhaps try and um, reinforce my confidence that I have in them to in in terms of enforcing these robust set and conditions. So yeah. okay. perhaps Thomas first. No, Thank thanks, you, Chair. Thanks, Mr. Ball. Yeah, I'd love to come to Thomas next. Um, I I do sense um, a, a sense. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry. I'm being supplied. Um, I do sense uh, a sense of frustration from our officers uh, within the council regarding NRW. And um, I'm going to call on Thomas now, Thomas Boothroyd, um, to um, enlighten committee uh, anything that you wish, you know, you think that would strengthen the argument here. Thank you, Thomas. Oh, thank you, Chair, and thank you, councillors. Um, yeah, I, just, just to reiterate, um, Steve's point, what he was saying about the odour management plan as well, really, because whilst we had um, an odour management plan when permission was granted in 2005, the actual plan itself um, was, was quite flawed, really, and, and it didn't really give much of a, a stick, shall we say, for the authority in terms of enforcement. You know, the actual odour management plan itself was on as an appendix to the decision notice. It, it, it was two pages long. Um, mm. I don't know if, if members are, have been able to view the... Um, the order management plan as it is now but it, but it's yeah. obviously um a much more thorough um and more detailed affair that you know obviously if if, if that is conditioned as it is advised to be conditioned in, in the in the um recommendation and that does actually you know that does provide the authority with 
a lot more oomph behind you know any enforcement action that may need to be taken should a breach of condition occur that is you know a thoroughly detailed you know and proper road management plan as, as it should be because that you know that that was what they've submitted for the environmental permit so obviously nrw require that um as you've touched on obviously there's a lack of confidence with them um, nrw actually um so we say enforcing um, the things that are in that odor management plan, as as Steve has said, um, the conditions that we've got on on the recommendation as it is actually returns, you know, some of that power back to the planning authority. Then, and we've obviously got that more detailed odor management plan, along with any um, reviews that, that do need to be undertaken. So going forward, if it does need to be reviewed. You know that that will occur and, and the conditions as steve has said you know will require that of, of the authority so we don't necessarily have to play um second fiddle to nrw um i've been to various um technical working parties at the site um where nrw you know that they do go to those um so they are present at the site and should be aware of any issues w when they are mentioned um what i would say is that moving forward i think obviously we need to speak to kelvin about this but you know obviously um you know, Kelvin can become more involved in those technical working party groups moving forward so we can have a more active involvement, you know, in terms of that is what, it, you know, it is It is to discuss technical issues such as, you know, drilling wells or if there have been issues or if there are leachate issues, you know, they are discussed at those technical working parties. But I think obviously, like I say, moving forward, um, Kelvin's involvement in those would obviously be beneficial and, and you know, uh, joint with, that, with the odour management plan and, and uh, suggested conditions would help to perhaps even identify future issues as well as deal with any past. I, th I think we might have just. Um, yes, I think we've lost Thomas. For lost Tom. Uh, unfortunately, Tom, Tom, um, it being in Carmarthenshire, is um, it, it's stuck out in the back of beyond sometimes. So he, he does yeah. occasionally have technical problems. We'll so I think we back to uh, Kelvin then, because I, I was just Thomas say, may be able to come back to us. So I'd love to hear from Kelvin and Olia, um, because uh, Councillor Purcell has said something regarding safety, and obviously. Um, that is paramount for our residents. So um, would you be able to? Um, oh, he's waiting in the lobby, James. Coming back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I um, I'll just explain uh, that we, Thomas, we, uh, had you more or less come to an end or <laughs> would, you like to, would you like to continue no, with what I was, you were I was, trying to say? I just wanted to pick up on, on the point as well. I think it was Councillor Purcell there made about the monitoring. Um, yeah. I just wanted to clarify that um, as part of the minerals and waste permissions, we do actually carry out routine monitoring site visits and they are carried out in, and that's something that we carry out probably four times a year. Um, if, if, if issues do occur, we can carry out that more times a year. Uh, I hasten to say, I think, you know, if, if it hadn't been for this COVID thing, we would have been out there more often. These visits are also chargeable. We charge the operator £330 every time we visit the site. So it's obviously in the best interest of the operator not to incur more site visits. Um, we did carry out site visits um, in September, June and 9th of December in 2019. It would have been due a site visit in February, March time. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously that didn't, um, didn't occur for various reasons uh mostly covid um yeah. again this is something i think um potentially if if the environmental health team have um the staff and the time for that that's something again that we could carry out you know as a joint approach you know not only the technical working parties but also um with the um the monitoring visits where we actually do a walk over of the site you know we go out in the in their Land Rover, whatever, when we go to various different points on the site, we actually do a walk over of the landfill. Again, this could be something where, you know, going forward, if permission were to be granted, um, it should be something that we could do at a joint approach. And I think that would be, you know, beneficial in terms of, you know, identifying potential issues or coming up with solutions for issues that have already occurred. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, that's all I want to say at the moment. Lovely. The... Thank you very much, Thomas. I'm sorry we lost you temporarily. That's okay. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. These things happen with remote meetings. Yeah, I'm going to come. Yeah, thank you. I'm going to come back to Cal Kelvin now for our environmental health officer in Neathport Talbot and ask you to uh, give us any sort of comfort that you can 
to uh, members that this is indeed a different situation from what has happened before, because I think both councillors there and possibly others who haven't even had a chance yet may wish to emphasise. So, Calvin, can you tell us that this is going to be different? I, th I think um, that's quite a difficult um, question to sort of answer in a difficult position to put us environmental health into. But what I think would be helpful is to see what, what has changed since last year and since my team's involvement with, with yes. the complaints. Um, Apologies like, if I put you on the spot there. No, that's quite OK. <laughs> um, we, I think we've got to be mindful here. The regulatory function for that site rests with Natural Resources Wales under the per environmental permitting scheme, and that is a statutory function. And there is we environment health have difficulties taking um, legal action, statutory action and under the Environment Protection Act because that regime is in place. And there, there is a, a sort of statutory guidance out there which says we you shouldn't duplicate that on enforcement action regarding the Environmental Protection Act for nuisance and the environmental permitting regime for where there's conditions attached to to um, um, sites which should prevent order being in a problem and and I think what sort of Thomas and Steve have sort of identified here that there was a um, difference between what was on the planning permission and what natural resources Wales had in place so with their conditions because the order management plan is key to those controls so the order management plan that um, we've seen for this planning application is something which I understand has been in place for a while, but with Natural Resources Wales, although it's been updated in 2020 following um, sub or submission to this um, for this application. So, and I think from what Thomas was saying, the challenges that the planning authority had with taking any action regarding the previous order management plan for planning purposes. I think that's been sort of covered. So the, the, it isn't, there is a complicated enforcement position for the site. Mm -hmm. And and I know this, I'm grateful for the comments for, for environment health and I'll pass that feedback to the staff. Mm -hmm. And I think um, some of the recent complaints was mentioned that environment health haven't contacted um, some of the complainants. I do know that we have contacted everybody that's come through to us and we've referred them to Natural Resources Wales. So I think this is part of the challenge for me is really how to manage complaints coming in because effectively you've got three um, bodies here that are trying to sort of regulate the same thing at the site or try and have an involvement in the site. So you've got the Planning Authority, you've got Natural Resources Wales and then people normally come to Environment Health because they think um, yeah. order and all that comes to environment health and they don't understand the split with enforcement responsibilities, um, which which they wouldn't. Um, and it's the challenges we have at other sites, for example, Tata. Um, and so we've got, we've got same issues there. So what I would sort of propose, um, if, the, if the committee today was mindful of, of granting um, the extension, this, and set up some sort of enforcement memorandum or some sort of procedure whereby we can formalize the complaints procedure for this site in, rela in relation to order. Um, so I think I think that is, would be sort of definitely needed. I think the other the other sort of question then um, I think was in, in my sort of area what that was the enforcement part of it. Hopefully I've answered the difficulties that we have as an authority as an environment health authority. But then the other question then I think was about whether the order management plan would resolve the problem. Yes. Um, and, and I can't give any assurances on that. Um, I think you've, you've already touched upon the, the issue that if you want to resolve the problem there, then um, the only way to 100% guarantee there'd be no order is if there was no landfill. So, but we, we are mindful of the need. And I think this is this is where we have come in um, identifying concerns and what I've been doing with with sort of Steve and Thomas for um, a number of, sort of months here is trying to get these robust conditions into the planning permission regime. And the condition three, um, which is about ceasing op operations there, if we are not satisfied the things that go, uh, have been dealt with on site, 
that's quite a powerful con um, condition. Yeah. And obviously, we we will sort of look at in, um, advising the planning authority um, uh, along the process, and we we'll, we will sort of assist them with any enforcement action that is needed there. Yeah. So, um, the the other sort of challenge that the site do have, they do have um, under the environment permitting regime, they have. Um, best available techniques as a as a sort of option with regard to the controls they put in. So the controls they can do for order mitigation um, are should be the best available techniques that's available at the time. Some of that stuff is worded in the Natural Resources Wales um, need to be involved with because they are the experts for landfill sites and for order mitigation and for what is best available techniques. So I think I know it may sort of um, it sound to me as if a lot of stuff's going to come to environmental health. It's got to be this joint enforcement approach. Yes. Okay. It can, it, we cannot do it in, in isolation. Thank you. Thank you. I am minded that we, you know, we we are spending a, quite a lot of time on this, but because it is, you know, as is always the case with planning, it is so vital to sort of talk it through and get everything um, mentioned and answered. I don't want anybody to go away saying, oh, well, they didn't answer that and they didn't answer that. So I am minded that there's a balance to be made here between the questioning and the considered detailed argument um, argument answers to the questions. So um, I thank the officers so far. I think, uh, Arwen, you sent in a written question, which has sort of been touched on, but did you want to say something first for members of the committee? Yeah, yes, I did, Chair. I, I did indicate in my covering email that I yes, would uh, yes. be, be requesting to speak as well. That's fine, yeah. Um, um, b before I get into the body of my report, uh, Chair, just like to make a couple of points. Um, it, it's been constantly mentioned during the presentation today about the two members. Can I remind committee that it's three members? Lower Brinaman does exist as well. Um, so I wanted to make that point. It's it's so I, I get disappointed, the chair, that that, that Lower Brinaman seems to be because it's out on the extremities of the of the county borough. Uh, very close to command then that is not part of this authority well it very very much is yes I'm absolutely. disappointed you know uh, that uh, that so often lower Brunaman is excluded i represent lower Brunaman and Targwaif. they are there and they should not be forgotten no, uh, the and, other and point, I, the before, other point just I, before you move on councillor and I'm, I'm totally if you've got the impression that um the committee is only considering two it was only because it was the two speakers that I was referring to, not generally that there were only two um, councillors involved. So I, my apologies for that. If that's come across, um, no, 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 not, for, not, not from you, Chair, but, but 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 from the officers. Quite frankly, I need the officers to remember that Lower Brinaman does exist. Okay. Uh, and the second point I want to raise before I get into the body of my of my address, Chair, is that this is very much a land raised site. There's a bit of a misnomer here about calling it a landfill. It's a land raise. It's actually raising the land up above other levels. So we, we mustn't let that disappear from uh, our thoughts and understanding of what we're talking about. Anyway, Chair, the most important issue under consideration for this application, as has so eloquently been uh, stated so far, is order derived from the site and any possible health issues that may be associated with it. There has historically been an issue with orders from the site, but none more so than a spate of complaints last year. Mm -hmm. I have received complaints from residents in Lower Brinaman, which is three miles away from the site. And I have also personally witnessed orders from the site, which I have referred to Natural Resources Wales and raised that meetings of the Site Liaison Committee. However, despite several referrals to NRW, the regulator and this authority's environmental health and trading standards, who at one point served an abatement, abatement notice, there have been further complaints of order emanating from the site 
some very recently. Chair, I believe that it is important to note that the site is currently operating without the benefit of planning consent, mm -hmm. which expired in September 2018. The fact that the site was not completed at that time and still has spare capacity is heavily influenced by the increase in recycling, which has resulted in less waste diverted to landfill. Therefore, I don't quite understand the claim in this report on page 22 of a quote significant increase in the amount of material landfilled in Pulfa Watkin in 2018. On that point now, Chair, may, may, may I uh, thank Mr. Ball for his uh, response, which is included in the amendment sheet to my question. So that's yes. addressed my question. Now, I, I accept uh, the complexity, the complexities rather that are involved with this, but I thought it was worth submitting that question in advance. Mm -hmm. so that the answer can be clearly uh, defined and explained to committee. As yes, we are obliged today. to you for submitting it in advance, Councillor. So, so, so I, I thought it was, it was well a, a, a good exercise to do that. Mm -hmm. Now, Chair, I'm certain that many residents of the surrounding villages have endured, and I mean endured, the site for so long because of the availability of a household waste recycling site on site. However, that facility was closed in 2019. Since then, it has just accepted residual waste. And to exacerbate that matter, waste imported from areas outside the county borough. Chair, I could go on for very much longer, but I'm conscious of time constraints and this less than ideal way we are having to convene meetings during these very difficult times. Thank you. Before I conclude, however, I do want to mention uh, the conditions. Now, despite the robust conditions that are proposed, I'm afraid I cannot support the recommendation in front of us today, and I will therefore be voting against. The reason behind that decision is that despite numerous complaints about order, the company has clearly failed to satisfactorily address the problem. Therefore, my decision complies with the, the revised EU Work Framework Directive 2008. Waste management should be undertaken, quote, without causing nuisance through noise or order. And that is to be found on the bottom of page 18 on the top of page 19 of the report. Chair, it's all very well to have robust conditions, but when it gets to the point of having to enforce them, it is too late because the problem has already occurred. The only positive way to eliminate order problems is to eliminate the cause of it. And Chair, for those reasons, I will be voting against the recommendation today. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Wilcock. Um, I, I would add that obviously the, the conditions that are being put before members today, they do include the seven day clause. Um, so we can only judge uh, planning applications on their on their basis of merit that what's before you today. And I know that local members do have long memories and you don't have to have such a long memory as all of you have. Uh, eloquently put today. However, you must, um, well, you must, um, I would like you to uh, take into account that the, the officers of the council were not in control of uh, what was happening at the site due to the fact that National Resources Wales were involvement and um, it, it is difficult uh, under, under the LDP, we have responsibilities to provide a site. It is under the LDP. So it's very difficult to sort of say, well, we're not going to have it anymore. Uh, as as uh, Mr. Ball has, has, you know, put in his address to the committee, we are obliged to provide this. We have agreed to provide this. It is in the LDP. What is before you today is um, 
taking into account all of these complaints and issues of odour and to the best of our ability as a county borough putting in the conditions and I think you've heard from the um, officers concerned and maybe felt their frustration as well in that they have not always had the best results from NRW. We we can't back away from that. It, it's been stated that uh, NRW haven't had complaints. Well, quite clearly they have had complaints. This before you today is a method whereby we can comply with everything that we are supposed to comply with. The resident safety, uh, and I'm going to come back to Calvin because I don't think he's quite um, covered the safety aspect of that. I'll just come to you in a moment. And complying with our responsibilities as a county borough, a planning authority and providing the site. Um, I would like to come back to Kelvin then just on that one point of safety. Because um, I think two, me two members actually said about safety. Is safety uh, being taken at the utmost seriousness on this? And uh, can I have your comments on safety for the residents? Well, we, we, we're looking at this from an environmental health point of view, from the nuisance point of view and the public nuisance. Um, yeah. And we, we haven't sort of had anything that I've seen about safety or seen any reports which indicate there may be a safety sort of issue here. Right. Um, so it may well be, um, I need to sort of come come back on that. Um, I'm not really, the, the gas is normally, um, once it's in the, the atmosphere, is normally about a nuisance issue. And right. the fact that you can smell the the, 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 the gases from the property. So yes. if, if you sort of... There is an odour issue, yes. <clears throat> yes, there's, an, there's definitely an odour issue. And, and that's the sort of the angle that, that Environment Health have been looking at yes. this from. Right. Um, we talk about safety. That is something a little bit different. Yeah. Um, however, um, I'm not aware of any sort of re stuff out there that's been brought to my attention, okay. which highlights a safety issue from the gases at the residential properties. Mm -hmm. um, I, OK, that's fine. Could I have a comment then from either Mr Ball or Thomas regarding that? Safety. Yeah, Tom, 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 for this hand, I was going to, going to uh, defer to his um, technical expertise Thomas, on that one. Thomas. Sorry, yeah, um, I, I wasn't necessarily going to uh, comment on safety as such. Actually, I was actually going to mention something else at the time, oh. but, um, <laughs> but yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, as as Kelvin was saying, um, yeah, I mean, the, the main thing in terms of safety, yeah, is is it would be dealt with more more by the environmental health um, department really, in, in terms okay, of. Yeah you know odor and everything else um but also you know in nrw and via the epr environmental permitting regs would also be looking at um mm -hmm. you know, in terms of safety um i i was actually just putting my hand up i don't, I don't know if it's a slight diversion there but I, I, I just wanted to um mention the policy side of things again and and the um you know the rates of, of recycling and landfill and everything else because i know um the councillor alvin wilcock uh, mentioned that earlier on um yeah, like I say, slightly off topic what we were just talking about, but I know it was mentioned previously about the TAN being out of date. Um, obviously, as Steve said, that is, it is still the relevant policy. Um, but whilst the TAN is quite old now, um, you know, we, we do carry out um, annual waste monitoring reports. So we do have data that, that is quite recent. And I know obviously uh, Councillor Wilcock expressed a surprise at the 2018, there was an increase in landfill. Um, mm -hmm. You know that that was the case. Um, you know we we um, we have an officer with us um, working in the policy department, and he does that. He collates that data every year for the whole um, South West Wales region, and that is live data that comes from NRW and from the sites themselves. So mm -hmm. um, okay. you know, obviously, whilst there is, and and, and we encourage, um, you know, an increase in recycling. Unfortunately, the, the, you know, it, it's just the reality that there is still a residual element of waste that cannot be recycled. Um, unfortunately, that's just a fact. Um, so that residual waste, as it is, does need to be dealt with. And, and at the moment, in the short term, as we've already identified with them um, towards zero waste, you know, looking to 24, 25, um, landfill is providing, um, you know, the capacity to deal with that residual, that element of residual waste. Mm -hmm. um, until there are new technologies that come on stream um obviously any uh, you know war waste applications were always very controversial as well so you know to, to just say oh yes we'll do this 
um, isn't easy because you know a, a new development to do with this residual waste it can take several years to get through planning. So, you know, landfill is very much you know kind of seen as a shall we say a stopgap. You know, whilst um, alternative technologies are being developed and and then getting planning permission to be able to operate as well. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Thomas. I have an indication from the vice chair who wishes to speak. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair. Hope everyone can hear me okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, as Thomas just mentioned, the um, the tan. I just thought I'd, I'd pick up on that as well, just just to reinforce the point that although the it, the policy was created a long time ago, as far as I understand it, the calculation around the capacity of landfill sites is based on live volumes of waste being generated. So as the volumes of um, residual waste being generated decrease the calculation in terms of how much landfill space you need takes that into account so uh, as far as I understand it correct me if I'm wrong um, we're not calculating the landfill capacity based on the rates of residual waste from you know x number of years ago we're actually looking at the actual um, quantity of waste being produced um, but the point I really wanted to make was um, around these conditions really um, it's been quite a, a convoluted and technical a conversation really um, around uh, the existing position, the previous position and the proposed position of where we might end up uh, with this plan application. And I'm, uh, I suppose, trying to get that clear and summarise it as best I can. Um, so, uh, you know, as far as I understand it and, um, you know, we, we had some, some good discussions with the officers about this as well. Um, you know, the site is currently without planning permission and therefore, as um, Mr Ball explained earlier, we can't enforce conditions because there are no live conditions on the site. Um, so regardless of the effectiveness or not of previous conditions, currently there are none that we can actively enforce under planning legislation. So the only avenues open to us are environmental health legislation and NRW, which we've had a good discussion around the effectiveness or not of NRW. Um, so when we've been in a position where effective enforcement of the site has been uh, you know, quite difficult to achieve. And I think the comments from members, um, local members, pretty much um, explain that very well. Um, but I think it's important to emphasize what this application is proposing to do yes. um, in terms of um, improving the effectiveness of that enforcement and I, I kind of wanted to you know directly uh, address um, Councillor Purcell's point around the order management plan um, and the fact that it was in place and why it's not been um, as effective as it might have been and I think the answer to that is that NRW have been responsible for enforcing that order management plan yes and I think the, the point that we need to emphasize is that the conditions on this application bring some of the control um, in terms of enforcing our order management plan to the council in, in terms of planning legislation, in terms of breaching of conditions. Yes. And that's really important to emphasise because this isn't, although environmental health have a role to play and have got the trained and experienced officers in that field, the decision to um, enforce on the conditions is a planning concern. That will be dealt with by the planning department and and as um, I'm sure Steve Ball will explain can be done quite swiftly um, you know if we, if we get information that a condition has been breached we can issue a letter issue notices very quickly um, on these sites which is which is something that's not been available to us in the interim period where the site hasn't had um, an active planning permission and previously to that the conditions were not robust enough to allow us to take action in that way. So I'm just trying to outline quite clearly yeah, the fine. difference that we're going to see in terms of the enforcement capability if this application is passed. And mm -hmm. in my view, it, it, it does address the concerns of the local members in terms of the enforcement action that can be taken. Now, I, I think, you know, we, we all can see and we're all aware that this is a landfill site and it's not going to have no impact. And it would be disingenuous for me or anybody else to claim that this site won't have any impacts on the residents. But what we need to do is ensure we can limit the impacts to levels that are acceptable 
under the terms of the conditions, under the planning legislation, under environmental health and their permit. And it's clear that the site has not been doing that in the past. <laughs> but it's my it's my view in terms of the conditions that are imposed now that we be creating additional controls that will compel the operator of the site to to improve uh, their performance in terms of order because the consequences of not doing that will be significant in comparison to the position we're in now. They, they are very much aware of the effectiveness or not of an RW and the ability that we currently have to enforce. And that will change significantly if this application is, in, is approved. I just wanted to make that point clear. Thank, oh, you, thank, you, thank you very much, Vice Chair. It's very uh, succinctly put. Um, and I would also add that um, it was mentioned that some of these would be regarded as duplication maybe by NRW, but the fact is our officers recommend them because they feel that in the past it hasn't been the case where this intervention might happen from NRW. So um, if, if members are happy to rely on our our officer's opinion, um, the opinion is to approve. Uh, Councillor Davis, um, I don't know whether you're aware, but we can see all your notes <laughs> that you, you've put up against your screen there. Uh, and I can see that you wish to speak. So, uh, Councillor Rosalind Davis, please. Uh, thank you, Sean. You, you've, been, uh, you've been quite good in, in presenting uh, the conditions that we should uh, agree to it. But I'm going to assume that the main gases from the tip at present is hydrogen sulphide. Am I correct? Can an officer answer that? Any officer? Thomas or Tom? Tom? <laughs> yeah, I mean, the landfill gases are most, well, they're quite a mix, to be honest. Um, you, the me methane would make up probably the. Um, the largest proportion of, of the gases coming from the um, site there. I don't know if, um, if, if Kelvin has got any. Councillor Davis. Sorry. Does that help you at all? Yeah, because well, you know, um, to be fair, that uh, you know, there are. I'm sure there are lots of odors as such, and there are lots of gases coming from many a tip, and of course, especially with hydrogen sulfide and methane and of course they they poisonous gases how are we going to deal with that um councillor i i did ask earlier on uh, with regards to nuisance or safety and i i had uh, an answer that as far as they know they they haven't got any issues of safety most of this is odor nuisance rather than safety but of course you know Odor and poisonous gases is is should be with safety as well because it's not safe, is it? I'm I'm going to ask officers are the levels of of these uh, gases at 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 a safety level rather than an odor nuisance level. If if the, if it wasn't at a safety level, then then you know NRW would have to intervene, you know, via the environmental exactly. permitting regulations. I mean, they need to be yeah. safe. And, okay. and, and they are tested under that um, environment EPR environmental permitting measure. Right. I, I'm aware that Councillor Hunt wants to come in, uh, but both Leah and Kelvin have both sort of indicated they wish to enter. Is it because of what uh, the council has just said, or is it a different issue? I, um, I don't know if Kelvin was going to say the same as me. I might be able to offer okay. a little bit of an explanation on oh, the okay, gases yeah. Yeah. because of okay. my experience of dealing with contaminated land. So not active right. landfills as such, but yeah. um, certainly historic landfills where uh, we look at measuring ground gases and um, and the impact they will have. Um, the, the the highest risk from those gases from an active landfill is is very much going to be to workers and be an occupational health and safety risk that will need to be monitored obviously by um by right. the site in accordance with their health and safety risk assessment mm -hmm. the um the off-site risk would be incredibly low given that the the gases will be diffusing to atmosphere they don't they they are much more um a risk to health in in high quantities, in, in confined space, spaces, in close contact, the diffuse risk from these sorts of gases is, is incredibly low. And, and I don't envisage that being something that, that needs 
any sort of further mitigation from us. The controls for the health and safety element will be much higher. Thank you, Leah. That's very helpful. Councillor Davis, does that answer your question? It is an older issue because of the diffuse nature of anything that comes into the atmosphere. Yes, I, I realise that, but I just okay. wanted to know what the main gases were because, you know, these are poisonous gases at the end of the day. Right, OK. Councillor Hunt, please. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, can I firstly... You've gone on to mute. Well, that went on on its own then, I promise you, we didn't touch it. <laughs> it's OK, it's but, OK. Uh, I don't know what you heard. I just want to thank Mr. Ball for a comprehensive report on, on, on all the agencies that have to put this together today. I mean, yeah. it's very important we have as much information when making decisions, uh, certainly on something as a, uh, not just emotive, but uh, an important decision. Can I thank the three uh, localish members, those that uh, are here today representing their constituents, which is, uh, and they've done it very eloquently. Uh, and brought a lot of interesting information that I certainly wasn't aware of, which is which is key again when you make decisions. Yeah. Um, I wanted to uh, ask a question and bring up, a, 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 well, questions they probably all are really, but um, as far as the operator goes, um, are they obliged to, to uh, have a quantitative emission data of, of landfill operation from time to time, uh, from the very beginning uh, up until uh, the situation, as you mentioned, we come into the end. I, particularly in relationship as modern operations, the current fresh waste and landfill gas are composited or on site. I just wondered, gathering data is important for, for you as officers on NRW and Again, I will reiterate that uh, my confidence in NRW is pretty much like everybody in this meeting today, probably. Uh, and, and, and that's key when we're dealing with ODA. Now, this, this application that we've spoke hours on, Chair, and I thank you for allowing me to, to ask a couple well, of questions. Well, yeah, I am trying to sort of yeah, no, draw it to a conclusion, yeah, but yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and I think it's it's revolved around the ODA. I mean, that's the key here. And, yeah. um, I'm well aware of all landfill sites have these orders. I, I would have thought in, in the technology we have today, we could have dealt with that uh, a, a, anyway going forward. However, when landfills are decommissioned or, or cease to exist, you mentioned restoration. Uh, I'm just I'm just wondering, is the order still in, in, the, in the air? Will these communities still have to put up with this order? Because when I drive down to Kamada, and I don't know the name of the one there, just on the way in, uh, that is absolutely uh, uh, horrendous smells and orders for miles. Uh, and again, when we have summers and people want barbecues and so forth, it's an impossible task when you've got that sort of horrid smell in the air. So I just wondered, uh, have we got any historical sites that have closed for many years that the, the orders are, are, are dis dispersed and, and disappeared altogether? Um, last thing, Chair, for, from my point of view, um, I certainly agree with Councillor Woolcock today. I, I, th I think unless we can have an assurances that uh, the, the dealing with order, you know, it, it's not fair, it's not right. I, I, I appreciate what Sean, Councillor Percy, have said, and if we could manage it, but it's confidence. This is my last point. It, it, it's something that you have to have in life, and not just as a councillor, but as anybody living anywhere in any community. You need confidence in what not just the councillor are doing, NRW are doing, and any other agency that are dealing with a problem. Uh, I am got the confidence that this problem will be dealt with after this meeting. I have no doubt that Mr Ball and his team and, and all those involved will do their utmost to assure us or, or that they will deal with it. But again, I, I am sorry, I wave on the, the lack of confidence that anything would actually change. Uh, and, and, and for that reason, uh, again, sorry, this is my heart instead of my head uh, uh, perhaps taking over. 
but I'm reluctant at this stage, unless I hear a little bit more, to support this application this morning. Thank you, Chair. Okay, right. Uh, issues raised by Councillor Hunt? Anybody want to answer those? Um, I, I think some of the, again, I might ask Tom if he's got some information. I mean, you, you've talked about um, the quantifiable of the landfill data and stuff. I mean, I, I, I don't know, Tom, whether you've got information about how much they have to record in terms of what they do, but obviously I, I imagine in, you know, that we've got details in terms of what they've done on, on this particular permission in terms of um, over the years. Um, and I think in terms of the historical sites again and the one we refer to in command she given that you are from command she may be able to give some feedback about that um what i would say is just from a plan perspective covering your last point um councillor hunt um i think it's it's a shame really just to, to to say you know I, I i know that you have faith in in me and my team and, and us as an authority um what i would ask is for that to transpose itself into the confidence that that this committee shows in your officers to enforce the robust set of conditions that we are recommending because ultimately if if we didn't feel that they were appropriate or that we um could take appropriate action to do so then we wouldn't be recommending approval um, and if, and, if, and if i think if members were to say we haven't got confidence in our w and yet we're still going to refuse this that to me displays a lack of confidence in your officers to say that we will seek to do this. However, that being said, I also appreciate that this is a long-standing issue that that um, all, all the local members and the members of the committee want want to have that that confidence. That they, they they are there. I mean, sorry, Jed. The, the three conditions are set in place. They are as robust a set of conditions on odor as any consent will probably ever have had mm -hmm. in in and around this area. Um, they bring it back into the control of the local planning authority. Um, in the discussions I've had with with Kelvin and, and Leah, they, they are aware of this. We've formulated these based upon discussions with 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 Commandership, with Leah and Kelvin and myself. We are all confident that they are enforceable and robust conditions that will, as far as practically, address this issue. Now, um, ultimately, members have to make the decision whether they accept the requirement for landfill to continue and within that context that this is the most acceptable way forward for the next three year period to protect the amenity of residents and we as officers give our assurance that that we will robustly enforce those the the operator is here today will have listened to the last two hours worth of debate about this yeah I, i'm fair, fairly certain will have been left in no uncertain terms how strongly everyone in on this screen feels about odors at this site and that at the very you know at the first failure of this site to re react to to those issues should permission be granted will will you know rigorously be in, you know, defended and enforced by this authority um i don't think there'll be an, an, any doubt about that but okay. ultimately each each of the members need to determine you know whether they feel that those are appropriate set of controls but within the context of a national and local policy that says we require this facility to continue Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Ball. Uh, I would remind members as well that the recommendation is based on the professional officer's opinion taken into the round of everything that they have to take uh, account of. Um, you you do need to have some sort of planning reason to, to sort of go against what officers are recommended. And I was just wondering what, what would be in your minds uh, as a reason for not going with the the recommendation as to your reason, rationale for that. Um, we have got the LDP. We are obliged to provide a site. Um, the officers have even gone sort of as far as do some sort of duplication to NRW um, against the norm, um, just so that this uh, authority can have much more uh, tighter control over this site and i'm just wondering what if i could come back uh, to either person who said that they would go against the recommendation as to your reasoning councillor wilcock or councillor hunt yes yeah i thought i made it clear in my in my presentation i beg your pardon uh, yeah i did i did suggest that uh, it, it complies with uh, 
the revised EU Waste Framework Directive of 2008. Yes, yes, yes. Waste management should be undertaken, quote, without causing nuisance through noise or odour. And the officers today have given, you know, the full backing of their knowledge that to the utmost degree, they cannot say that there will be no odour. Uh, however, even if you take away, uh, the, if you vote for a refusal of planning permission, um, that indeed comes with its own set of problems and the residents will no, in no way be home free if the refusal was granted, so to speak. So I, I'm conscious of time and I want to resolve this. Uh, so I'm going to, there's two people that have been indicating for some time, Thomas and then the vice chair. So I'm going to take those two and then I'm going to try and wind this up. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thomas, yeah. Yeah, sorry, I was just I was just wanting to answer um, some of um, Councillor Hunt's um, queries with regards to um, the, the data. Um, like the, the waste, the different terms of waste streams in terms of, the, you know, the, the waste accepted, that, that is that is all measured and, and that is recorded in the um, the annual monitoring reports as, as well as in, you know, the, the site's own records. Um, also, when we do attend the technical working parties, you know, that which NRW attend as, as well as the planning authority and members of the site. Um, there are numerous, um, well, there are lots of different data that's collected from the gas wells on trace gases that, you know, the, the composition of the gas, um, the composition of leachate, the, the percentage of uh, the concentration of the leachate, you know, all that information um, is discussed in the technical working parties and is also required, you know, to be submitted um, under the environmental permitting regulations as well. I and mean, obviously you've got your own opinions about NRW, but, um, you know, that, that information, um, you know, is required via, the, via that permitting regime. Okay. Um, and then in terms of the um, the old landfills, um, a, a lot of odour from landfill um, tends to um, tends to come from, you know, the cells that are still open and, and that are still working on. Um, once once the cells have been capped and, and lined, you know, that that odour will vastly reduce, and they'll have gas wells and, and um, drainage and everything else on site to try and reduce, um, you know, the, the concentration of leachate and obviously the concentration in the gases as well. So once the site has been capped, you know, rainwater won't be able to get into the site and won't be able to um, permeate and form, you know, the leachate, which again is quite a big source of the, the odour. Um, the landfill site in um, Carmarthen is Nantuck House. Um, and, and yeah, <laughs> the, 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 they have um, have had leachate problems there in the past. Um, what it is the kind of the kind of in between cells at the moment so they've still got one that's semi open whilst they're thinking about opening another cell so there is still um part of that site that is open to the elements so it's still generating leachate and there's obviously still the odor that's just coming from um the waste it hasn't been capped in its entirety so that's why there is an odor here obviously on completion of this site um it would need to be capped and you know a lot of the the, the gas well infrastructure and, and the drainage would all need um, um, CQA or construction quality assurance then from NRW as well as it's been constructed uh, prior to placement of capping and everything else and prior to the restoration being completed then. Um, I hope that answers your queries but um, yeah, right. I can't think of anything else to say about that one. That's fine. Councillor Hunt, uh, be brief because as I say we, we haven't even got onto the second item yet but although I do understand that everything uh, pertains to both probably. I, I will be brief. I, I thank Thomas for the response and as I, I was trying to intimate to is it doesn't go away, it gets reduced. But I, the, what I wanted to come back on is to Mr Ball. Uh, and just to clear this up, I have the utmost confidence in our officers and all those that carry out this work. But he sort of mentioned that if the why I was going to vote uh, against uh, suggested that I didn't have that confidence. And I, and I think that's a little bit naughty of him to sort of mention that because I, I wasn't quite happy for him to sort of go down that road. I have a confidence, but looking at the report, looking at uh, listening to the local members, uh, you know, I'm entitled, Chair, as you know, Ooh, to vote uh, in whichever way I see fit, yes. given the information supplied to me today. Uh, and I just want to clear that up, uh, I... that I have got the highest respect and confidence in the officers carrying out their work. 
I just clear in that depth. Thank that, you. That's fine. Thanks, Councillor Hunt. Um, um, we, we just, yes, I know Steve wants to come back on that. Steve? Yeah, yeah, thank, thank you, Chair. I mean, no, I, I get that, uh, Councillor Hunt. Um, I, I wasn't trying to um, upset you, shall we say. It, it's more, I have to put forward the views that as officers, we yes. are putting forward a set of conditions that we feel will address these issues exactly. within the context we talk about. And, and it is important. But what I would say is the way this debate is is going there, there there's there's a, a couple of members, shall, shall we say, that are, are clearly um, uh, veering on the alternative view. And, and I don't have a, an actual recommendation as such. But, you know, um, Councillor Walcott, you've talked about the fact that, um, you know, this is me interpreting here. You, you're effectively saying that your view is that notwithstanding um, the landfill void capacity within the region, continuation of landfill at this site is not considered to be acceptable because um, the unacceptable impacts are rising on the amenity of uh, nearby properties as a result of odour, blah, blah, blah. That's what you, you are saying, and that's fine. I get that. Um, if that is your view supported by other or others, I think that an alternative recommendation would probably need to be put forward with the appropriate wording for members to actually vote on as an alternative recommendation, i.e. refusal on the basis of. Um, and I think that's important to, to, to do so to understand whether members are minded to refuse on that basis. Um, Rebecca in legal maybe had to give some advice on that, but I think it might be appropriate and it, it might be appropriate given the length of this debate if members were minded to do that, it might be worth having a five minute recess for one yeah. or more of those members to to draft something for members to actually vote on as an alternative recommendation, because it would need to be I, we would need to understand precisely what the, the objections were. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I unless um, unless members uh, are minded to indicate to me that they are willing to put forward an amendment. I will go with the recommendation and take that to a vote. So is anybody minded to put a recommendation in other than the officer one? Or are you just saying to me, I cannot vote for that? Chair, uh, uh, with your indulgence, uh, um, I'm not quite sure where, where we're going here with, with a need for um, uh, um, an amendment. No, there, there isn't a real I, need. You can I, just I, vote I in if you wish to, yes. I clearly indicated that I am um, unable to support this recommendation yes, based on what the report itself says on the European directive. Yes. So I don't know whether you want to take a legal view on that, Chair. Um, uh, Rebecca, uh, at the moment, I'm minded just to go to, after the debate is completely finished, and I think we're at, at that point now, go to recommendation and ask members whether they are, uh, which way they're going to vote on this. There may be members who cannot support it, but that doesn't mean to say that they wish to put forward an amendment. I'm sure that any of them that wish to put forward an amendment will indicate to me, but so far have not had indication of an amendment. So I'm quite happy uh, that maybe there is uh, members who don't wish to um, vote for this recommendation. Can I have your advice then? The process, Chair, normally would be that we would have a vote on an alternative recommendation to be put forward. So right. that would be a recommendation of refusal on the basis of right. whatever reasons. Okay. Um, and the committee would vote on that. If, that, it is, if yeah. that is approved, then that would become the substantive, the substantive recommendation. Motion. Yeah. And you then yeah. vote on it again as okay. the substantive recommendation. Okay. Yeah, thank you for that. So that is basically where I am. I'm ready to go to recommendations. So um, does anybody in the committee wish to put forward uh, an alternative amendment to that recommendation? Councillor Hunt, your f f hand is up. Is it in re answer to that question? Yes, Chair, it's not a legacy hand. I, no, I, OK. I I needed to take your advice and Rebecca's advice again. Yes. Irrespective of an amendment. Yes. If, uh, if more members vote against the officer's recommendation yes. without an amendment, what is the legal uh, yeah. position then? That's what I needed to clarify. Okay. Thank you. Well, Rebecca, normally it would just 
Can you refuse? It, 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 can, it can be. It can be done that way. That's not the normal process no. that we would do. It would no. achieve the same result. Ultimately. But what I prefer, what I would prefer, if members are minded not to vote that way, is to put forward an amendment and therefore stating their reasons why they would not recommend go with the vote uh, to recommend approval and i would ask them then to formulate a, a form of words and as steve has said i would give a recess of, of five minutes if any member were minded to do that i agree i think it would be more appropriate and more the normal process yeah. for an alternative recommendation to be put forward first okay um, rather and allow than members voting. to vote on it yeah yeah, rather than voting on what we have in front of us currently, that's yeah. potentially being voted down or voted yes. against, I should say, okay. and then um, then doing a new one at that at that stage. So that's the state we are, members. Um, I'm ready to go to recommendation. Does anybody have uh, a mind to put forward an amendment to this recommendation? No, I see none. No. OK, then on that basis, um, I will go to the recommendation on page 37. Excuse me for just getting back to there. 37. The recommendation is that subject to Welsh ministers withdrawing their holding direction under Article 18 of the Town and Country Planning Development Management Procedure Wales Order 2012, that planning permission is granted sub to sub subject to the conditions listed in the report. Do I have someone to propose that, please? Vice Chair, thank you. Anybody to second? I'll second Suzanne Renkes. Oh, Suzanne Renkes. Thank you, Suzanne. So we have had a um, proposer and a seconder. Mm -hmm. I will now ask Jane yeah. to uh, go through the roll call of the uh, voting members of the committee, ask them if they've been present for the whole item yeah. and with which way they intend to vote, please. Yes, thank you, Chair. If I could start with you, Councillor um, Chair, are you what I, I know you've been present for the whole of the meeting? I have been present for the whole yeah. meeting and I will vote for the recommendation. Right. Uh, Councillor Percy, please. Yeah, I've been present for the whole of the meeting. I'll be voting for the recommendation. Councillor Ross Davis, please. Councillor Davis. You're on mute, Councillor Davis. Oh, it's, it's not working most of the time. That's OK. We are, we are terrible difficulties. And, and my battery is very, very low. Please. OK. I have been here for the whole meeting. Yes. And I am voting against the recommendation. Right. Councillor Hunt, please. I have been chair for the whole meeting and I'm voting against the recommendation. Councillor Wolcock, please. Sorry, Chair. Yeah, I've been here for the whole meeting and I'll be voting against the recommendation. Councillor Williams, please. Chris Williams. I've been present for the whole meeting and I'm voting against the recommendation. Councillor Suzanne Renkes. I've been here for the whole meeting. I'm voting for the recommendation. Thank you. Right, Chair, that's three for the recommendation and four against. OK, um, that um, application is refused then based yeah. on the uh, voting of the uh, committee today. Yeah. But, Chair, um, we need to understand on what on on what grounds yes. and on what. Yes, I would like to ask now the people who yeah, have this voted is, against. What this is, this is why we were looking at a recommendation, wasn't it, Chair? I know, but I I didn't get anybody to oh, give me a recommendation, uh, um, an amendment. Sorry. So, um, would you please, uh, Councillor Davis, uh, give me the reasons why you are voted against? Because of the statement that Councillor Arwin Wilcock made. Is that fine? Yeah, Mr. Ball, yeah. The, 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 uh, Councillor Wilcock actually wrought his down, didn't he? He, he said um, on, on the basis yeah, of I, I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't think we have anything that's that's um, sufficient for reason for refusal at the moment. I, I understand that it would appear on odour. I mean, I, 
Councillor Williams, I know that you have voted against, but obviously we haven't heard from you today. So I, I, I can only assume, I, mean, I have to say, if people are voting against, I would expect members to, to let us know or, or what ground so we could respond to it. I'm assuming it's odour again yes, for everyone. Yes, it is odour. Can I just say, so, Mr. Ball, so. I do respect the department and all your officers, but the odour issue, and as Councillor Alwyn Wilcock has commented previous, is it the outside waste coming from there? It's not from our authority, like you said about the outside waste and the order issue. I do feel is a big thing for those communities. Okay, I mean, I, I understand. I mean, the, the issue about waste coming in, it, it's a regional facility. It's not just yeah. a local facility. It is about the region anyway. But so odor, I, I yes. believe everyone's objecting on odor. So I think out of the four members who um, voted to refuse, I think between them they need to come up with a, a recommendation you know a, a wording of the reason for refusal rebecca would you say we'd need to vote on actually vote on the wording because i think i think it would be prudent to. to do so i think we have to so we so have to have, can, a, we have uh, can we have a, a recess of perhaps course you can yes. have a recess, uh, 10 minutes then um for officers to uh, converse with the off with the members who have refused um their vote as to if you can come up with a um, a reason amongst you that is a, a, a sound planning reason. Chair, so it's, yes, who's that? It's nice me, it's Jane. Can, Jane. We, can I suggest that we give a time and we'll say that we we'll re reconvene at twenty five oh, yes, to one? Yes, is I was just looking right? at the, yes, uh, we re, we will. It's just nearly twenty five past. We'll reconvene at twenty five two, and I'm hoping that that then will be we'll we'll have that form of words ready. Thank you, and I'll see you in ten minutes. There we are. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Are, are we staying on this call, Chair? I think, we, yeah. I think we need to. I think we need to pause the recording. We yes. cannot have this. With, with the other, we cannot have yeah. this with with yeah. members we'll, of public in, in the room. Hang on, we just stop the recording. And, and